I guess the credit for us starting the, the conservation journey or the soil health journey would go to, I guess, our soil and water district. Somewhere in the mid 90s, they started pushing strip till and a single species cover crop. So in the late 90s, we finally adopted, they finally beat my dad into submission and he gave up and we tried that and, uh, and it's worked great. We would plant into everything standing and I guess we experimented on corn and beans first because our cotton was you know, just too precious to expect it to come up through a jungle. So we kept spraying and killing our cover early or on the cotton for a little while. And then once we started getting the stuff on the ground, was really when the corn and the beans started to take off and then we were able to, to transition that into the cotton as well with rolling it down and getting it on the ground and then planting through it as opposed to leaving it standing. We hadn't really started covered I think six years ago maybe now. Like you said it was a challenge for us to try to go out there. I, I had row sweeps on my planter. We were planting corn. We had the whole idea we we're going to plant into it standing you know and just plant into it. Well, the roof sweeps wouldn't work. We had to take the roof, up. Oh, yeah, we had to take the roof sweeps off. And finally, once we'd done that, we were able to plant the corn. But then we ran into a problem. When the corn started coming up, everything started laying down on the ground. The corn was getting eat up. It's a little bowl. And he was down there digging up all the roots. Yeah. But we did notice wherever the tractor ran and flattened the cover down flat, he didn't mess with that roll corn. But everything else out there, he he just, and I mean, he kept eating until that corn seed rotted and went away, you know. So we lost bad stands, but that kind of got us, well, hey, we can get this done, make this work. So my daddy started farming in January of 68 there near Waynesboro on the coastal plain. He started in pretty much doing like everybody else did. Um, it was a full tillage system, rip, you know, bed, knock beds, plant cotton. Um, I don't know, four or five years in, he said, there has to be a better way. Started in strip tilling, and he was just telling me the other day about, about one of his first experiences with using cereal rye as a cover. We feed cattle too, and, and over the years, um, we did a lot of overseeding. We'd fly on cereal rye, maybe rye grass with an airplane over soybeans ahead of defoliation, and uh, to get an early start on, on grazing feeder cattle. But that was really, it wasn't really for cover, it was really for cattle. But the truth was he was covering. He had planted it and we had weather and he didn't have a high boy and he couldn't get out there and, and terminate it. So it ended up being you know, seven, eight feet tall. And uh, he had to figure out how in the world to run that strip till rig through that eight foot tall rye. And uh, you know, it, it about drove him crazy, but he, you know, it was a learning process and he was able to, to really get you know, to begin to see uh, how he could make that work. And in the end, what he saw in the cotton crop behind that cover really opened his eyes.